as Chancellor of the University, I declare this congregation open for the conferring of degrees by the authority of the Senate and Council. As Vice-Chancellor, I am delighted to welcome you all to this degree congregation. It is a celebration for all those who graduate today. We celebrate your many achievements that culminate in the award of a degree from a major international research and teaching-led university that has been placed in the very top group of UK universities by a number of league tables. In August, we were delighted when data prepared by the University of Cambridge placed the University of Leicester in the UK's top 20 research-intensive universities. International league tables focusing on the top 200 universities in the world placed Leicester in that group. Similarly, a league table developed in China on the top 500 universities worldwide placed Leicester at 151st. We are truly a university of international renown, recognized for its high quality. All graduation ceremonies are special. This is a special degree ceremony, predominantly for postgraduates. It provides strong evidence that we are the leading UK provider of postgraduate talk courses as postgraduate students constitute approximately 50% of the university. Many of you have combined work with part-time study through distance learning, an approach that I hope may appeal to parents and friends in this congregation, who may also wish to study with us. Indeed, I can guarantee that if you pro approach any member of university staff at the end of this ceremony, you too can be signed up and on your way to a degree ceremony in the De Montfort Hall in three years' time. For those who graduate, I hope you will consider taking other degrees and courses with us, and those who have successfully achieved a master's degree should consider talking with their tutors about registering for a doctoral programme. But what kind of university is Leicester? This year, we have over 18,000 students. There are 3,500 staff, and we have a turnover of over £160 million. Clearly, there are many other characteristics of the university based on high-quality research and teaching. Only yesterday, the Higher Education Funding Council for England announced the results of the largest competition involving teaching excellence that has ever been mounted. The Funding Council has set aside £315 million to fund over 70 centres of excellence in teaching and learning. Only 16 universities have more than one centre, and I am delighted to be able to tell you that Leicester is among them. We have been awarded a Centre of Excellence in Teaching and Learning in Genetics Education and also one in Geographical Information Systems. The Genetics Centre links teaching and research together. It will focus on developing generic skills and also widening participation in the field of science education. Meanwhile, the Geographical Information Systems Centre will focus on an innovative curriculum the use of technology in the teaching of spatial literacy and support for developing innovative teaching in world-class laboratories. Overall, the success we have achieved in this competition demonstrates the importance that the university gives to teaching and learning directly informed by high-quality research. As we continue to innovate, we also need to develop our estate. Four years ago, we developed a £300 million development plan for the university. Already, we have established a number of new projects. Refurbishments have taken place in archaeology and chemistry so that staff and students are working in state-of-the-art facilities. 
In October, we opened the Michael Atiyah building, named after our Chancellor, where we have established a mathematical modelling centre drawing on engineering, chemistry, physics and mathematics. This coexists with the highly successful Space Research Centre and gives many leading scientists excellent facilities in which to work. Finally, we have just taken delivery of a £20 million biomedical building into which scientists are actively moving, literally, as I speak. This will help them generate more large-scale research grants and contracts to support their work in the future. But this is not the end of campus development. In 2005, we will begin the development of a new student hall of residence, which will complement other residences in our student village. The library programme will also commence. This is a £25 million project that will provide state-of-the-art facilities in a 21st century library. It will double the size of the university library, create space for a new careers advisory service, create a cafe available for staff and students, create a bookshop which will serve the university and the local community, and provide facilities to support innovative teaching and learning both on campus and by distance learning. Such projects all demand further funding. We have established a systematic fundraising campaign in order to support the development of the university library, to complete a cardiovascular research institute, and to create a series of new academic positions. I hope that many of you will wish to explore the possibilities with other alumni for supporting your university. It may be that you know someone who could provide large-scale funding for the university. You may be able to introduce us to a trust or a major donor, and you may wish to make a personal contribution. All these are very welcome. Finally, I would like to congratulate you all on the degrees you have obtained. We hope you will keep in touch with the university, and I shall look forward to meeting you at alumni events. But before I close, I would like you to join with me in thanking parents, relatives, friends and sponsors who have supported you through your university course over the last few years. So I would ask the graduating class of 2005 to join me in a round of applause for those people. That's terrific. Now, of course, in organising a degree ceremony such as this, many people contribute to making them a great success. And this afternoon, I would like to single out one person. And that person is Hilary Whitbread from our Personnel Services Department, who has served the university for almost 28 years by the end of this term. She has always strongly contributed to the success of degree ceremonies and has contributed much else besides to the university. Indeed, I know that she is particularly good at calming down candidates who are waiting to be interviewed for the post of Vice-Chancellor in the University of Leicester. And I would just like you to join with me so that all the students and staff represented here can say to her, thank you very much indeed for the support you have given to the degree ceremonies, and thank you very much for all the things you have contributed to the university. <laughs> That's splendid. Have an enjoyable day, applaud your fellow students, and all good wishes to you in your future careers.
The study of English literature is both an intellectual discipline and a passion of the heart that informs the ways in which we live and think. This university has produced many distinguished students of English literature, and none better embodies that balance between intellectual analysis and a passion for good books than Professor Isabel Armstrong. In the mid-1950s, Isabel Armstrong became one of the first students to register for a Leicester degree, when the former University College of Leicester became a university in its own right. She read, English led in, she read English in a department led by the inspirational figure of Arthur Humphreys, who looked after his students with a degree of conscientiousness that has remained a model for succeeding generations. This was the period at which the University of Leicester was assembling the nation's most formidable group of Victorian scholars across a range of disciplines. In English, the eminent Victorianist was the Dickens scholar Philip Collins. It was he who drew Isabel Armstrong into the field of Victorian literature that was to become her intellectual habitat. Professor Armstrong remembers the enthusiasm with which the staff at Leicester communicated to students the intellectual excitement of their own research interests. We now speak about the synergy between teaching and research, and the Leicester department in that period is an instance of the realization of that ideal. Academic staff saw the instilling in students of a love for their subject as their primary purpose in professional life. Finding her academic feet in this stimulating environment, Isabel Armstrong gained the top first of her year. She was now firmly set on a career as an academic and remained at Leicester to study for a PhD, initially under the supervision of Richard Hoggett, another of this university's great scholars. After completing her PhD, she took up a position at University College London. At that time, there were still separate men's and women's common rooms at University College London, and it was difficult in those divided circumstances to feel the intellectual excitement that had sustained her at Leicester. At UCL, she wrote her first book, Victorian Scrutinies. At a time when most Victorian scholars were writing about the novel, she chose to write about poetry. And in this book, she aimed to change the way Victorian poetry is read by attending to the importance of print culture, by examining how books came to be published and to be read. Her sense of the importance of the Victorian periodical is one that is still shared at Leicester because the doyenne of that discipline is our present Dean of Arts, Professor Joanne Shattuck, who was Professor Armstrong's PhD student. Married professionals in academic life are often faced with the choice between long distance commuting and changing jobs. And one such moment of decision arose when Isabel Armstrong's husband took up an appointment at one of the radical new comprehensive schools in Leicestershire. This appointment proved to be a great boon to this university because she successfully applied for a post in the English department here and spent eight happy years here during the 1970s. The transition to a professorship, however, was inevitably going to be problematical. The difficulty was that professors tended to be male, and those who weren't tended to be single women. Even in the post-war years, female academic staff had been expected to resign their posts on marriage. At one interview for a professorial chair, Professor Armstrong was, was even asked if she could cook. She overcame these prejudices and became Professor of English at Southampton and ten years later moved to a chair at Birkbeck College in London. Perhaps the best measure of her standing and her teaching at Southampton and Birkbeck is that she attracted large numbers of postgraduates, many of whom now hold posts in universities from Oxford to UCLA. She also produced her seminal book on Victorian poetry and then an Oxford anthology of women's poetry which together substantially reconfigured thinking in this field. During this period, which was punctuated by Spell as a visiting professor at Harvard, she wrote her greatest book, The Radical Aesthetic, a study which sets out to rethink the category of the aesthetic in response to a long period in which what she called the hermeneutics of suspicion set aside a whole range of aesthetic and philosophical questions. Academics are 
unusual people in that their allegiances are to their subjects, their students, and to the general educated public, rather than to the institutions that employ them. One consequence of this oddity is that when formal institutional allegiances end with retirement, everything else carries on. In retirement, Professor Armstrong does what she has always done brilliantly, write and teach. Her recent research has centered on the cultural history of glass, which she examines in the context of the Victorian love of luster and of transparency. She has, in retirement, taught at Exeter University, accepted an appointment as Senior Research Fellow at the University of London Institute of English Studies, and served as President of the British Association of Victorian Studies. In America, she has held the Robert Frost Chair at Middleton College and is about to take up the John Hinckley Visiting Professorship at Johns Hopkins. She has also returned to Harvard as a visiting scholar. Recognition may come slowly to women, but in the case of Isabel Armstrong, it has now arrived in some splendor. In 2002, a conference entitled Radical Aesthetics, The Work of Isabel Armstrong, was devoted exclusively to a celebration of her work. In 2003, she was elected to a fellowship of the British Academy, the highest accolade open to scholars in the humanities in the United Kingdom. Mr. Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and the Council, I present to you Isabel Armstrong that you may confer upon her the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. I admit you the degree of Doctor of Letters and welcome in your manners. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, members of Senate and Council, distinguished guests, fellow graduates. I have two things to say today. The first is to thank the University of Leicester for this very great honour, and to thank the University of Leicester for its superb, unforgettable teaching which has remained with me all my life, and which I'm sure you as graduates have also experienced. I was lucky enough to be a student in the wonderful department of Arthur Humphreys, whose wife, Jean, is here today, to be taught by P.A.W. Collins, and to be supervised by Richard Hoggart. This wonderful tradition of teaching is carried on today by figures whom you have just heard from, such as Gordon Campbell, and by Joanne Shattuck, now the Dean of Arts. The second thing I want to do is to congratulate you, the graduates, for your outstanding achievements, the feat of winning your degrees. I think of a poem by Yeats, the poet Yeats, who spoke of blear-eyed wisdom born of midnight oil. I'm sure that none of you have got away with getting your degrees without having that blear-eyed feeling as you worked late at night, kept awake by coffee, perhaps, and other things, to complete assignments and to fulfill deadlines. If any of you got away without this, I should be absolutely astonished. But Although you have made, you may have well been blear-eyed, your wisdom is not. And I think that I move on to another quotation from the poet Yeats, who says something important about our pursuits. Words alone are certain good, he wrote in a very early poem. Across the range of subjects represented here today, you will have met creativity in language, in words, in your own particular disciplines. Reciprocally, you will have been trained to bring a critical imagination to words, to language, in your respective disciplines. And you will realize that words do not 
stand alone, that arguments, that context, that the use and abuse of words and language is one of the central preoccupations of your research and thinking. You will have learned, all of you, in different ways across different disciplines, that words do very unexpected things. This is an art that you will take into the world with you after completing your degrees. It's an imaginative and a practical art. For in this world of language and media overload, in all spheres, we need expert thinkers, sensitive readers, who can celebrate language, interpret it, and interrogate it. Congratulations to you all once again. May you have rewarding and exciting careers. Graduands in the Faculty of Arts will be presented by the Dean, Professor Shattuck. Will all graduands in the faculty please stand? Mr. Chancellor, <clears throat> I ask you to admit these candidates from the Faculty of Arts to the several degrees for which they are presented. Graduands of the Faculty of Arts, by the authority of the Senate, I admit you to the several degrees which you are presented. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Donna Fancourt. <laughs> Helen Setright. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in Archaeology and Heritage, Jason Clark. Jean Curry, <laughs> Abby Guinness, <laughs> Branya Limi, <laughs> Kay Lee, <laughs> Penny Stone, <laughs> Denise Taylor. For the degree of Master of Arts in Archaeology of Food, Anita Rodini. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in English and Humanities, Ewan Tsang. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in English Literary Research, Nicholas Clark. <laughs> Robert Lynch. Peter Spratley. For the degree of Master of Arts in Humanities, Maria Royo de la Torre. Sue Smith. For the degree of Master of Arts in Landscape Studies, Joanna Condliffe. Sarah Walters. Daniel Windwood. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in Modern Languages and Humanities, Emma Staniland. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in Modern Literature, Barry Fry. <laughs> Manpreet Gruel. <laughs> Claire Mitchell. Jenny Richardson, Nick Sutton, 
Anna Watts. For the degree of Master of Arts in Museum Studies, Chris Ford. Jane Hanny. Claire Hewlett. Ian Jones. Keiko Kyoyoiwa. Lindsay Orn. Ruth Sharp. John Smith. Diane Taylor. For the degree of Master of Arts in Professional Archaeological Practice, Maria Gonzalez Rodriguez. Daniel Pryor. Amy Richardson. Jonathan Shotton. Joseph Skinner. For the degree of Master of Arts in Rome and its Neighbours, Nana Friedman. Emily Goff. For the degree of Master of Arts in Victorian Studies, Jenny Dyson. Natalie Kozakowicz Leonard. Maria Mylona. Samer Stefan. Mr. Chancellor, I ask you to admit to the several degrees for which they are presented by my faculty those candidates who are absent. By the authority of the Senate, I admit those candidates who are absent to the several degrees which they are presented. Graduands in the Faculty of the Social Sciences will be presented by the Dean, Professor Jackson. Will all graduands in the faculty please stand? Mr. Chancellor, I ask you to admit these candidates from the Faculty of the Social Sciences to the several degrees for which they are presented. Graduates of the Faculty of the Social Sciences, by the authority of the Senate, I admit you to the several degrees which you are presented. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Gay Ferdon. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Business Administration, Zayed Abu Kuta. <laughs> Vida Akia. Talal Al Haribi Al Makathawi. <laughs> Norbert Amuna. <laughs> Ihab Arafa. <laughs> Victor Asidu. <laughs> Linda Brady. Samuel Brony Pinkra. <laughs> Fabul Shalerma Safayakorn. <laughs> Wan Chen Chiu. <laughs> Jeffrey <coughs> Creech. Hui <laughs> Du. Wen Chu Gan. 
Eileen Goff. Holly Gratton. Mohammed Hakim. Wan He. Xiao He. Megumi Hirata. Maria Hops. Zi Hong Hu. Ahmad Joghub. Maria Jaminskova. Colleen Jones. Yahim Kagiri. Lynn Kelly. Mithoni Kuria. Evans Kwangpong. Mohammed Lafir. Frank Lanahan. Richard Lee. Vasantha Lilananda. Carol Lewis. Hutio Lee. Jiang Ning Liang. Luigi Mancusco. Simon McLean. Simon Monaghan. Steve Moore. Betty Mungangui. Basil Nabi. Nela Nanji. Samuel Osi Sarkodi. Lucas Panayotu. Habib Patel. Wen Kui Peng. Gavin Percy. Chin Yu Kwan. Felix Quay. Viju Ravindran. Desmond Reagan. Tariq Rayman. Beverly Roger. Kazuyasu Sake. Kwaku Saki. Pumela Salela. Clive Sarson. Karen Schrock. Ya Le Shen. Dolan Sinha. Wei Ting Sun. Suji Suvarna. Fang Wan. Hiro Wantabe. Michael Welser. Ian Whitehead. Suella Wright.
Ling Yi Wu. Wang Ting Wu. Xu Zhang Yo. Raymond Yo. Chin Zhong. Kui Zhu. Yong Zhu. Rochelle Kadarmapuli. Xiang Huang Lin. Yu Chen Liu. Jeremiah Munganyi. Irene Panigoka Popolu. Jerome Spiteri. Thanuja Thanayayam. Richard Deacon has occupied the foreground of British sculpture since the 1980s. His constructions in wood or metal range in scale from the domestic to the monumental, their structure recalling both engineering and anatomy. He has sometimes said that the reason for this is that his mother was a doctor and his father a pilot. The forms he creates evoke both the material world of everyday artefacts and the inner world of language, memory and sensuality. Richard Deacon was born in Bangor in 1949. He studied at the Somerset College of Art, at St Martin's School of Art London and the Royal College of Art in London where he graduated MA in 1977. He was a visiting lecturer in sculpture at several schools in the UK and in Europe, and he has been a professor with a full teaching load at the École Nationale Supérieure des Beaux-Arts in Paris since 1999. Richard Deacon was awarded the Turner Prize in 1987 and was elected to the Royal Academy in 1998. He was made Chevalier des Arts et des Lettres in 1997 and CBE in 1999. Richard Deacon has had many solo exhibitions here and abroad, perhaps most notably at the Tate Gallery in 1985, the Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh in 1988, the Hanover Kunstverein in 1993 and Tate Liverpool in 1999. In Krefeld, in Germany, a twin city of Leicester, he exhibited at the Museum House Esters in 1989 and in 1992 completed the installation of a major public commission in that city. In 1987, a comprehensive survey of his work toured Europe and in 1996 to 97, the British Council sponsored a touring exhibition of his work throughout South America. In 1991, he was co-curator with Dr. Philip Lindley of this university of a major exhibition of pre-Reformation British sculpture at Tate Britain. This was the first such exhibition there and was notable for Richard Deacon's design of the installation, which protected the works whilst giving the visitor an unobstructed view. Richard Deacon likes to call himself a fabricator. Several aspects of his perception of himself as a sculptor, as well as his, as his sense of the place and role of sculpture, are included in this label. 
He uses the language, forms, configurations, and methods of construction that are more commonly associated with engineering or furniture construction. His sculptures derive their detail from these processes. They refer, by analogy, to other things in the world, and several meanings, levels of meaning resonate within them. Richard Deacon works on both the domestic and the monumental scales, combining the essence of biological form with elements of engineering in his precisely made structures of wood, metal, and occasionally plastic. Metals are riveted together in sweeping shapes, and wood is laminated, bent, and twisted into unlikely ribbons. Elaborately and perfectly constructed bentwood sculptures, such as What Could Make Me Feel This Way, A, of 1993, with its studied use of open form, match the space in galleries. At the other end of the scale, his 1990 work, More, mounted high on bridge pillars in Plymouth, is a sinuous, mild steel construction some 25 metres long. About 50 years ago, C.P. Snow bewailed the existence of the two cultures, the unwillingness of scientists and humanists to communicate with each other. As an aside, we note that Charles Percy Snow, Baron Snow of Leicester, physicist, civil servant and novelist, was the first student of University College Leicester to receive a higher degree for work done at the college. He received an MSc in physics in 1928. Then, as now, physics leads the way. Many would argue that the divide between the two cultures has widened over the intervening years. But Richard Deacon transcends this division. He joins the two cultures into a seamless whole in his work. As a sculptor, he has high skills in woodworking, especially the bentwood technique, where wood is steamed to become malleable so that it can be formed into the sinuous shapes he loves. He is also a highly skilled metal worker. But beyond these purely practical skills, Richard Deacon has reached out to the scientific world, seeking and giving inspiration. In the millennium year, he visited CERN, the Centre Européen de, de Recherche Nucléaire, near Geneva, as part of a project with the London Institute. The result was the exhibition Signatures of the Invisible, which displayed original works of art by Deacon and four other artists who had worked with scientists and technicians at CERN to create objects that reflect the ideas and techniques of modern physics. Later this year, he will use a three-month residency in the physiology department of the University of Oxford to study the relationship between structure and purpose in the biological world and to link the insights of biological scientists to his own understanding of space and form. Today, this university is proud to honour a sculptor and a scholar. Mr Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and of the Council, I present Richard Deacon that you may confer on him the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. Chancellor, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, members of Senate and Council, distinguished guests, fellow graduates, uh, it's an honour and a privilege to be here today. Uh, I thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for uh, um, the expression of uh, um, uh, belief, uh, confidence in what I've done and the recognition that is uh, um, entailed in this uh, 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 degree ceremony. Um, the good orator uh, suggested that uh, um, I call myself a fabricator, which is indeed a true. Uh, I do call myself a fabricator, 
Uh, and I've always liked the idea of being a fabricator and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the term fabrication, not least because uh, 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 of the um, dual meanings that are attached to that, uh, to those, those two phrases. Uh, the fabricator uh, is someone who honestly employs uh, artisanal techniques to construct uh, the world in which sits, uh, which is around us, to uh, um, bend materials to, and uh, um, fix them, make forms. But also, uh, um, uh, the fabricator is one who constructs illusions, lies, um, deceits. Um, so, if you say that's just a fabrication, uh, you call both things into. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, you call up both sides of the coin. And that as an artist, you uh, are the, have the capacity to walk both sides of the line. On the one side, you're honest. The other side, you're dishonest. Um, the, you can uh, um, uh, speak the truth, and you can lie. Um, these, these are the privileges of the artist. Um, and in that sense, the, uh, uh, and in some senses, uh, to speak the, uh, um, uh, to be dishonest can often be, in itself be very revealing. Um, so, in some sense, I also always feel slightly dishonest at uh, uh, an occasion like this. Uh, for me, I've uh, uh, got where I am by uh, doing what it is that I like to do, um, uh, by messing around, playing. Um, I've not uh, uh, had to burn the midnight oil apart from in the pursuit of pleasure. Um, and uh, uh, faced with uh, all of you, who have uh, worked so hard to get where you are, uh, I feel humbled. Uh, it's a uh, pleasure to be amongst you today. Uh, I wish you all the best for the future. And again, my thanks to the university for their uh, honoring of me in this way. Good luck to you all. The remaining graduands in the Faculty of the Social Sciences will now be presented by the Dean, Professor Jackson. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, for the degree of Master of Business Administration Finance, Yebo Ashimfur. Samuel Aji, Emifa Agbo Klu, Agayeman Isaac, Ali Mohammed Al Fadi, Emmanuel Aman Roti, Asari Ankama. Kwame Anno, Yo Antwi, Philip Antwi Agye, Kingsley Arthur, Abraham Ashikwa Atkins, Richmond Atuheni. <clears throat> Nadim Baraji, Edward Berko, George Bohan, Andrew Botsu Bedo, Peter Burke. Pubudini Dianada, 
Kanji Dekajevi Lulu. Yasir Ibrahim. Sophia SL. Oswald Asu Mensa. Della Hilu. Combena Karikari. Omar Kohli. Gabriel Conadu. Lina Mangoli. Michael Mugenyi. Kiemba Mwila. Stephen Normanio. Vivian Sitful Badu. Ganesh Parasod. Edward Pettit. Regis Rehel. Gideon Sapor. Dev Shadev. Dorcas Sibu. Hui Wan Su. Ben Tagoi. Kun Chia. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, Information Technology Management, Ali Al Dalan. Prince Ando. Reginald Antubam. Grace Chan. Antonio Regonan. For the degree of Master of Business Administration Marketing, Mazen Abdul Al. Henry Asante Donker. Kamal Beg. Frank Bamfo. Adrian Burke. Kumarini Kandapa. Mark Gathercole. Nashat Garib. Roger Kuh. Shun Sheng Li. Raj Makhamali. Evelyn Sia. Felix Ofori. Emmanuel Opuku. Stephen Pires. Sub Subramaniam Raju. Evelyn Tete. Ho Ning Wang. Yu Hui Ye. Kingsley Yerenki. Chen Zhang. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, Supply Chain Management, Sacha Barthram Kid. Elam Nasirov. Jeff Robinson. For the degree of Business Administration Total Quality Management, Alagesen Manikam. Elias Shemelis. 
Richard Simmons. For the degree of Master of Science in Finance, Tundi Adusayan. Karim Anadtawi. Sayed Ansar. Eodeli Bamedeli. Sukhvir Campbell. Thomas Chimwala. Kevin Chin. Amila De Silva. Baldish Grewal. Lee He. Himanshi Hindoka. Maya Hirani. Kalaroy Kalageropoulou. Manjit Kaka. Kahumba Kioni. Daniel Kutley. Constantina Limoni. Leanne Liu. Gary Mardel. Zong Hang Miu. Raymond Mutumi. Nkiwa Menchanya. Bena Narishi. Collins Nitim. Margaret Palmer. Yanis Papadas. Charisma Patel. Rupesh Patel. Sarika Patel. Yasmini Patel. Ranjeev Ranu. Amit Ratan. Z Razak. Mitch Rollins. Eniola Saka. Yi Ji Shi. Hardeep Sur. Harjit Thakar. Wee Tan. Bin Tian. Sophia Vasilaki. Shushan Wang. Matthew Ware. Mu Chia. Han Chiu. Meng Yang. Kun Yang. Jesse Xiang. Yong Xiang. For the degree of Master of Science in Management, Said Ali. Sachin Anand. Tosif Boot. Georgia Constantino. Emily Dong. Christina Feely. 
Yun Ho. Congratulations. Akshi Intwala. Congratulations. Neil Kakhira. Congratulations. Rishi Lakhani. Congratulations. Lily Lau. Congratulations. Nan Lee. Congratulations. Wei Lee. Congratulations. Zijuan Liang. Congratulations. Chin Liu. Congratulations. Chin Ma. Congratulations. Thank you. Rikin Morjaria. Congratulations. Yatundi Amodi. Congratulations. Thank you. Elif Ozalkan. Congratulations. Claire Palmer. Congratulations. Xu Ling Pang. Congratulations. Thank you. Yi Kuang. Congratulations. Sina Rajendran. Congratulations, Baba. Or Soba Moore. Congratulations, Baba. Andrea Sophocles. Congratulations. Alexa Sutcliffe. Congratulations, Baba. Christiana Sasui. Congratulations. Chris Verley. Congratulations. Yu Wang. Congratulations. Guan Hua Yu. Congratulations. Jing Shang Zhang. Congratulations. Zik Zhang. Congratulations. Eugene Zhou. Congratulations. For the degree of Master of Science in Marketing, Mohammed Abu Zaid. Congratulations. Derek Akohini. Congratulations. Rodo Alve Alvera. Congratulations. Lana Alkheri. Congratulations. Arditis Arditis. Congratulations. Thank you. Kwame Asante. Congratulations. Uh, Francois Boucheteau. Congratulations. Michelle Chan. Congratulations. Eka uh, Damici. Congratulations, thank you. Des Durmus. Congratulations, thank you. Adam Evans. Congratulations. Stella Evripidou. Congratulations. Sarah Francis. Congratulations, Father. Ling Hang Fu. Congratulations. Hardit Jill. Congratulations. Sura, Supra Rat. Sorry. Super Rat Haranput. Congratulations, Father. Huang Hong. Congratulations. Vicky Hu. Congratulations. Rihal Kamdar. Congratulations. Vikas Karbanda. Congratulations. Gigi Lau. Congratulations. Man Leung. Congratulations. Wan Chi Li. Congratulations. P.U. Liu. Congratulations. Simon Marshall. Congratulations. Jack Mitzi. Congratulations. Peter Muscat. Congratulations. Itier Honor. Congratulations. Anna Maria Pamboris. Congratulations. Chin Zeng Pan. 
Congratulations. Ruchika Pathak. Congratulations. Christina Paraki. Congratulations. Luke Pollock. Congratulations. Parveen Rule. Congratulations. Maria Stavraki. Congratulations. Thank you. Sarjit Thakar. Congratulations. Thank you. Ka Tam. Congratulations. Thank you. Paniotus Sitas. Congratulations. Thank you. Lan Wang. Congratulations. Thank you. Veronica Wong. Congratulations. Thank you. Chow Lin Wu. Congratulations. Thank you. Maria Zenu. Congratulations. Jin Yang. Congratulations. Pu Yang. Congratulations. Wei Zhang. Congratulations. Chow Zhang. Congratulations. Zi Ji Zhou. Congratulations. Lu Zhu. Congratulations. Ning Zhu. Congratulations. For the degree of Master of Arts in Mass Communications, Cheng Kai Yu. Congratulations. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, David Andeneran. Congratulations. For the degree of Master of Business Administration Finance, Prince Abogeye. Congratulations. Well done. Frank Brew. Congratulations. Well done. Kennedy Isaac Afful. Congratulations. Samuel Asilfi Aqua. For the degree of Master of Business Administration Marketing, Barbara Musoki. Congratulations, Barbara. For the degree of Master of Science in Finance, Herv Eel Salanga. Congratulations, Barbara. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I ask you to admit to the several degrees for which they are presented by my faculty, those candidates who are absent. By the authority of the Senate, I admit those candidates who are absent to the several degrees for which they are presented. Graduands in the Faculty of Law will be presented by the Dean, Professor Clarkson. Will all graduands in the faculty please stand? Mr. Vice Chancellor, I ask you to admit these candidates from the Faculty of Law to the several degrees for which they are presented. Graduands of the Faculty of Law, by the authority of the Senate, I admit you to the several degrees for which you are presented. <clears throat> for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Ahmed al Hawamde. <clears throat> Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. Sally Cunningham. I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Well done. For the degree of Master of Laws, Lindsay Chaudhry. Congratulations. Thank you. Niruban Rajakulandran. Congratulations. Guanam Zhang. Congratulations. For the degree of Master of Laws in European Law and Integration, 
Iris Nicolaidou. Congratulations. Well done. For the degree of Master of Laws in Human Rights, Anieth Dawal. Congratulations. Well done. Berinda Dio. Congratulations. Patricia Dyers Meave. Congratulations. Louise Halaskoff. Congratulations. Fortune Ikaya Maduyeni. Congratulations. Elaine Lewis. Congratulations. Well Michelle Mugayeni. Congratulations. Jennifer Packer. Congratulations. Dipti Patel. Congratulations. For the degree of Master of Laws in International Commercial Law, Arda Ake. Congratulations. Feng Chen. Congratulations. Jose Diaz Molina. Congratulations. Yui Fan. Congratulations. Stuart Fletcher. Congratulations. Halon Guo. Congratulations. Jarko Kaha. Congratulations. Hilla Christensen. Congratulations. Thank you. Alexander Llewellyn. Congratulations. Paulina Madej. Congratulations. Thank you. Rina Menon. Congratulations. Shaney Pancrasius. Congratulations. Lin Lee. Congratulations. Ruo Shen. Congratulations. Sing Sao Su. Congratulations. Leonidas Tasapoulos. Congratulations. Bye bye. Lai Wei. Congratulations. Kai Wu. Congratulations. Thank you. Shuang Wu. Congratulations. For the degree of Master of Laws in Public International Law. Avnish Gurban. Congratulations. Yoshiko Hashumi. Congratulations. Sarah James. Congratulations. Bye bye. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I ask you to admit to the several degrees for which they are presented by my faculty those candidates who are absent. By the authority of the Senate, I admit those candidates who are absent to the several degrees for which they are presented. The graduands in the Faculty of Education and Continuing Studies will be presented by the Dean, Professor Fogelman. Will all graduands in the faculty please stand? Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I ask you to admit these candidates from the Faculty of Education and Continuing Studies to the several degrees for which they are presented. Graduands of the Faculty of Education and Continuing Studies, by the authority of the Senate, I admit you to the several degrees for which you are presented. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Gila Hanuna. Leora Lev. Colm O'Connorkan. Alexander Schneider. Martha Sleeman. Congratulations. Well done. 
for the degree of Doctor of Education, Sue Dyson. Johan Hauptmann. Roger Minette. For the degree of Master of Arts in Applied Linguistics and the Teaching of English to Speakers of Other Languages, Anelia Forte. Wee Chen Su. Chia Ying Peng. Abdallah Sadiq. Hua Ling Su. For the degree of Master of Arts in Educational Studies, Begum Chubakwoglu. For the degree of Master of Arts in Primary Education, Rachel Pass. For the degree of Master of Arts in Professional Studies in Education, Robert Coles. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, Educational Management, Sarah Bennett. David Bowles. Margaret Carpenter. Alison Dakin. Min Du. Jim Dunstan. Mary Jane Edwards. Leslie Hosker. David Howells. Phil Kelly. Richard King. Costas Kupis. Keith Mallard. Carol Meadows. Edward Mwanza. Steve Newman. Matthew Osborne. Will Phelan. Andrea Shigliano. Michael Stanley. Hannes Takac. And Tobia. Patricia Townsend. Peter Wairi. Jacqueline Wheatman. Heather Wilson. For the degree of Master of Arts in Applied Linguistics and the Teaching of English to Speakers of Other Languages, Ian Robinson. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I ask you to admit to the several degrees for which they are presented by my faculty those candidates who are absent. By the authority of the Senate, I admit those candidates who are absent to the several degrees for which they are presented. Let me begin by congratulating you all on receiving your degrees. Young or old, you have earned your reward by your achievements, either in the examination or in the outside world. This is an occasion for us all to celebrate, and I'm glad so many friends and family are here in your support. This year will be my last as Chancellor of this university. 
I will have served for ten years and shaken ten thousand hands. So I have begun to sympathize with the Queen. <laughs> ten years is quite a long time. Looking back over the past ten years helps to put things into perspective. Of course, it is all relative. Ten years is a longer period for some than for others. Many of those graduating today will be in their 20s. Ten years ago, you were teenagers. Since that time, you have passed from school to university, changed from child to adult. It must seem a long ten years, with many ups and downs on the way. Many crises will have come and gone, and the problems of today are different from the problems of yesterday. For those of more mature years, you will be undertaking courses to improve your careers, or perhaps to change careers. The ten years shrink. You can see them as a substantial slice of life, but one that can be grasped as a whole, a single period in which you established yourself or took the decision to move on. Perhaps I could digress here on a personal note. My youngest son, after a long and profitable career in computing, recently took the brave decision to change fields, and he has embarked on a lengthy and uncertain training to become a clinical psychologist. Such career moves are increasingly common these days. I'm sure some of you today can tell a similar story. But let me return to my main theme, the passage of the past decade as seen from different viewpoints. As Chancellor of Leicester, and at my advanced age, the ten years appear quite short, a mere postscript to my previous academic life. It has, however, been long enough for me to get to know the university well and to become involved in its activities. For the university itself, which was only founded in the first half of the 20th century, these ten years have seen big, great changes. A big increase in the number of students, particularly at the postgraduate level, many new buildings, and an ambitious project for the future. I have seen vice chancellors come and go, or more accurately, go and come, and the standing of the university rise both nationally and internationally. The size and composition of this congregation today bears witness to these changes. If we move up from the university to the world scene, Ten years is also a useful period of time over which to make an assessment. Wars, earthquakes, elections have come and gone, but they loom much larger at the time than in a historical perspective. Similarly, in ten years' time, many of the problems that monopolize our headlines may have faded from view to be replaced by new concerns. But although many contemporary crises have a short lifespan, Underlying realities last longer and are measured in decades or centuries rather than months or years. Education is one of these. The increase in the numbers at school and universities and the growing sophistication of their studies is a worldwide phenomenon that started in the 19th century and still has a long way to go. Scientific knowledge, product research in universities and elsewhere, is also something very long term with a growing influence on in our lives. Politics may on occasion go backwards, but science always goes forward. The great expansion in the world population and wealth, with its inevitable impact on the limited resources of the Earth, is also a long-term phenomenon. The chief scientific advisor to the British government, Sir David King, has said that global warming is a greater threat to mankind than terrorism. This is just the kind of message I'm trying to get across. The political issues that grab the headlines pale into insignificance against the really important long-term problems that face us all. And right at the heart of our societies sit the universities whose aims, education and research are precisely the ones that we will need in the long term to tackle the crucial problems of future generations. It only remains for me to give you my best wishes for the future hoping that what you have learnt from the University of Leicester will be of benefit to you and your societies in the coming years. The future depends on you.
congregation closed.